Hello dear students, welcome to Axiomaticos. This video is the part of the solution series for CSIR net December 2019 and we are doing this problem 34 of your paper. It's a problem of complex analysis. So let us have a look. For z belonging to c, they are defining your function fz in this way. Then which of the following statement is false? So please mark this one because question is asking a false statement. So it becomes little difficult sometimes to prove which, which option is incorrect. All right. To prove the correct option, it becomes easy. All right. Suppose you have four option and one of them is correct and question is also asking the correct one that then it becomes easy question. But in this question, you have three statements which are correct. All right. That means you have to prove them correct. There is no other way. All right. Uh, or if th there is a way that some uh, you 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 get, uh, you solve a you solve an option among these one two three four and you got that this statement is false, then the question turns to be very easy question. But if you uh, if you solve some other option which is which is correct, then it becomes little bit difficult for you to prove it correct. That is why, because we have three correct options, so this problem becomes difficult for us. All right. So now let us try to solve it. First option says that your fz is continuous everywhere. What is the definition of continuity? So definition of continuity actually means that the limit limiting value of f at let us say at a point z naught is should be same as f of z naught. All right. So now let us talk about the point z is equal to 0. So continuity at z is equal to 0. I am talking about this one. So if z is 0 and I am finding out the limit of f at 0. So see what will happen since z is not 0 it is going towards 0 that means from the function you have to use this this part not this one why not this one because z is not zero it is approaching zero so this this means you will get this z bar square by z all right now see if i substitute all right what you are doing on a complex plane how your complex plane looks i will i want to show you this all right All right, let us say this is your complex plane and uh, let us say this is your real axis and this is your imaginary axis. So what happens is this that you are approaching zero. It means that you can come from any direction. You can approach this direction. You can approach this direction or this one or this one or some other direction in between them. You can approach to zero from any direction. All right. What I will do, I will substitute x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. So what will happen because of that, if I substitute like this, what will happen is this, that if you shrink the radius, radius for this circle, then what will happen? You are actually, what you are actually doing in this case, you are approaching zero from every direction, all right? So if you are approaching to zero through this circle, that means you are covering every path by which you can reach zero. That is why this limit is actually equal to R going towards zero. All right. Uh, this I am considering this Z to be X plus Iota Y. All right. So R cos theta plus uh, Iota R sin theta bar whole square by r cos theta plus iota r sin theta. So see, this limit is equal to this. I hope you understand this why we can do substitutions like this. Now what you can do, you can take r common out of it. All right, because r is a real number, so it has nothing to do with the bar over, over here. So what you will get, you will get this r square by r cos theta plus iota sin theta and on the numerator part you will end up with this cos theta minus iota sin theta 
whole square so see this term all right is non zero all right it's a non zero term r is cancelled by this one so when r approaches 0 0 into a finite term all right non zero uh, i cannot say non zero but i can say that it's a finite term because cos and sin both are bounded and the term in the denominator it is never zero simultaneously for a single theta that is why we can say that limit is zero so at z is equal to zero we are getting limit to be zero and see what's the value of the function at z zero this is same as f of zero so your function is continuous at zero now what another thing that we have in this part continuity at some non-zero number continuity at z naught which is non-zero all right so do you think that this case will be difficult no it is not difficult it's easy why because what will happen if you want your limit z goes to z naught z bar over z is uh, sorry square if you want this limit then you you know you have no problem in directly putting this limit you will get this are you getting my point because you you have problem only when z is zero that is why we are doing something like this now this is equal to f of z naught so from here we have finally proved that if z naught is if z naught the point at which we are checking the continuity it is zero then also your function is continuous and if it is non-zero then also your function is continuous so it is continuous everywhere everywhere so far we have proved this that means because your question was asking false one that is why this option was incorrect it is correct but it is this is not what your question was asking so now let us try to solve your b part in the B part, question is saying Fz is not analytic in any open neighborhood of zero. Now, question is saying that this function Fz in any open neighborhood of zero, all right, zero means the origin part, it is not analytic. This is what your question is saying. What I will use, I will use the differentiability definition. So we call a function fz to be differentiable at z0 if this limit exists. All right. So if this limit exists, then we call your function f, a complex function f to be differentiable. All right. Now let us try to find out if this limit is, uh, this limit is existing or not. So now let us do that part. So in this case, question is talking about zero that whether it is analytic in an open neighborhood of zero or not so my z naught is zero in this case so limit z goes to zero uh, what will happen z bar square by z you will get minus zero over z so finally what you will get limit z going to zero z bar square by z square all right now what i will do i will use in order to check whether this limit exists or not i will use a similar transformation like this the same transformation i will be taking so if x is r cos theta and y is r sin theta then what will happen in the previous case it was not cancelled properly because you have r over here and r square over here so in this case it will be cancelled completely so what you will get is this all right it will be cancelled completely so x cos theta minus iota sine theta whole square by cos theta plus iota sine theta whole square r square is cancelled by r square in the denominator so see this limit has no importance here now why because r is already cancelled so r is not here so this limit is equal to this now if you will substitute your theta to be something let us say you substitute pi by 3 then what you will get you will get a different answer if you substitute your theta to be pi by 2 you will get a different answer so what is happening this limit has many values so it is it can it, it is not possible that for a limit to have many values that is why we can say this does not exist so since uh, limit is not existing therefore what we can say 
that your function is not differentiable at z0 is equal to 0. It is not differentiable. Now, because it is not differentiable, and we know that in complex functions cases, if we are checking differentiability, then it has no meaning actually. In the complex case, if you are saying that your function is differentiable at z is equal to z0, that actually means that your function is differentiable in some neighborhood of z0. Checking at only one point will directly result at this thing that it will be differentiable in some neighborhood. Now, because it is it is not differentiable, so we, we, we cannot get a neighborhood for which your function is analytic, all right? Analytic or holomorphic are both the same thing in the complex cases. So that is why your option two is incorrect, all right? So it is saying it is not analytic in any open neighborhood of zero. And we all also prove, we, we, we prove the same thing that it is not differentiable, therefore it is not analytic in any neighborhood of zero. Although this is correct what we are doing, but your question was asking false one, that is why it is incorrect, all right? Please keep in mind. So now let us do the third part, all right? So let me erase everything, whatever I have written. Now let us do your part number third, all right? It says ZFZ satisfies Cauchy-Riemann equations at zero. Now for this one, what I will show that uh, that your function is differentiable at zero. This is what I will show. You know that differentiable for differentiability, the Cauchy-Riemann thing is actually necessary condition that you already know that if, if a function is satisfying Cauchy-Riemann equation, that is a necessary condition for that function to be differentiable. All right, so if I am showing that it is differentiable, then it is obvious that it should satisfy Cauchy-Riemann equations. So I am proving in this question, I am proving in the part third, I am proving some strong condition. And by using that strong condition, we will say that it satisfies Cauchy-Riemann, all right? So limit z goes to z0, sorry, not z0, I am checking at zero. Your question is talking about zero, all right? So fz, this is not your function. In this case, your function is zfz minus Z f of z0. Now z0 is zero, therefore you, you will get zero here too. So you will get z minus zero. So finally what you will get? Limit z goes to zero, z f z. So what is f z? It is z, uh, z is approaching towards zero, so you have to use this part of the function. So you will get z bar is square by z by z. So finally, what we will get, this thing will be canceled by this one, all right, in the ZFZ case. So what we will get then, we will get limit Z goes to zero. Uh, we will get Z bar square by Z, all right. Uh, sorry, I was incorrect. What is the problem? The problem is this, that if we are doing ZFZ, Yeah, everything is fine. I was just confused. So what we are getting? Limit z goes to zero, z bar square by z. Now in order to show that this limit exists, I will do the same substitution. X is r cos theta and y is r sin theta. So using this substitution, the limit gets converted into limit r going to zero. Uh, what is z bar? All right. So in the z bar case, you can take r common out of it. So it will be r square cos theta minus iota sine theta whole square by z. What is z? You can take r common out of it here also. So this r will be cancelled by this one. So what will happen? This thing is zero. Why? Because the denominator is non-zero. So it will be a finite quantity. Now, because it is a finite quantity and you are multiplying r with it and r is approaching towards zero, so you are you are getting zero. So finally, what we have proved that your function zfz 
is differentiable at zero. This is what we have proved so far. Now, because it is differentiable and you know that Cauchy Riemann equations are the necessary condition for the differentiability of the function at z is equal to zero, that means your uh, z f z satisfies Cauchy Riemann equations. All right, that is why third is correct, but your question is asking false, so it will be false. So that means in the fourth part, you have your false option. So we have done first, second and third. We proved them correct. So what will be the false one? False one will be this fourth one. All right. But what we have to show, we have to show that it is false. This option is saying that FZ is analytic in some open subset of C. All right. So what we have to show fz is not analytic in any open subset of C. All right. Don't get confused with the word analytic. Holomorphic and analytic thing both are same in case of complex. What I want to know, I want you to know this theorem. What is this theorem? It says f is all right i should write if instead of f so if f is analytic let us say in some neighborhood of z naught then what will happen del f over del z all right in that neighborhood this thing or is that it's, it is not partial differentiation with respect to z it is partial differentiation with respect to z bar this thing should be zero all right so what it is saying that if it is analytic then we will get that del f over del z bar is zero all right now in your case you have f is equal to z bar square by z so what will be the partial derivative partial derivative will be 2 z bar by z partial derivative with respect to z bar i am talking so see this term over here is non-zero term it is non-zero it is not satisfying this one all right so if it is analytic in some neighborhood then it has to satisfy this one and we know that it is non-zero so that is why we can say that uh, that is why we can say that your function fz is not analytic in any open subset of C. All right. So this is why your fourth option was false one. So this is how we can actually prove it. Uh, you may be lucky that you directly solve fourth one and you got that fourth is incorrect, but uh, it, 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 it is not al always possible that you directly solve fourth one. That means you directly solve the false option. So that means you have to show first, second and third true if you are unlucky in your exam. All right. Maybe you are lucky you directly solve fourth one and you got that it is false. So you are done with the problem. But if you are not, then you have to solve all the parts. So finally, if you have any doubt in this problem, you can always ask in the comment section. And also if you have any other doubt then different from this one, you can join our WhatsApp and Telegram groups. Uh, links are given in the description part of the video. So from there you can join uh, those groups, alright, so thank you.